Kemp is here. Gil Geek, learning new tricks. Let's talk about printing things on end, okay? It's pretty basic stuff, so you folks that are more advanced to, you know, may just want to skip ahead or, hey, hang around and tell me everything I got wrong you know, in the comments. Um, so, why print things on end? Um, for example, it would be a lot easier to print this model flat, uh, easier in terms of not worrying about any kind of supports, um, that kind of thing. It would take a lot longer. Um, we can get into that in a second. Uh, and uh, it might have some issues if the top here is not flat, which in this case, this is, a, is kind of a slightly domed surface. So if I print this flat, we are gonna see a lot of tree ring artifacting. Um, let me say, let me see here real quick if I can get something to show you that. Um, yeah, here's a case where I'm playing. I'm using that, that sort of artifacting intentionally, the steps, um, the Z steps here. The print head, uh, the effector, technically, I call it a print head very often. Um, it's probably not the right term of art, but I apologize. Uh, this prints in layers of a fixed height, uh, typically determined by what you said in the slicer, but right now it's running at 0.2 millimeters uh, a layer. So when you have a gently curved surface, if you print something flat like this, um, notice the stair stepping that you see on this guy. Uh, now, in this case, we're making use of it to kind of make it look like wood. But in that case, I definitely don't want it. So printing this on end makes a lot more sense. And printing it this direction in particular allows for definitely no supports on this outcropping. And these ones are at a fairly steep angle, which means I'll probably be able to print them without supports and with minimum issues. And I don't know if we can see or if I can zoom in. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah, okay. You'll notice there's, that's pretty clean. There's not a lot of drooping, not, no issues, etc. So this orientation then works better perhaps than if uh, I were to print it on its side where there would be a shallower slope going up. This would be a difficult orientation perhaps if I had a bed slinger where this bed is moving back and forth. I certainly wouldn't want to print it tall aligned with that bed movement. Uh, not if the, if the bed moved this direction, that would be bad because this would probably just snap off at some point during printing. Uh, if the bed's moving this direction, you've, you've got at least half a chance for that to, to come out. Now, the print speed is a lot faster because it, we take so much time to put down the first layer. It's typically printed at a fraction of the speed that the printer can use in uh, higher layers up. We want to make sure it's affixed to the bed because that's the foundation of the whole print. If it comes up from the bed during print, that's bad. You, you end up either with a warped print or the print might just come loose entirely and fail. And speaking of coming loose, you'll notice that I did not print this with a skirt. I used a brim setting. The reason for that is I wanted that little bit of extra strength in hearing it to the bed when the printer is up at these higher layers. It is not, you know, it's, it's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle moving at a 0.2 millimeter height. So it is squeezing that filament out. It's a lot like if you took a uh, cake icing kind of thing and squished that nozzle, you know, down to half its diameter to the cake and started squeezing out. And in fact, do that as an exercise. If you're, if you're prone to baking or you want an excuse to make a cake and understand what the printer's trying to do uh, try to ice a cake like you were a 3D printer and see how well you do at not having gaps and rounded edges and things sticking up. It's hard. Um, <laughs> it, so this orientation works really well in a lot of ways. It's something that a Delta printer like this has an advantage at because it is not moving the print uh, bed at all. Uh, a Core XY only moves it up and down, so that's second best to a Delta in terms of the stability of this when we're printing. But don't fool yourself, there still are forces being exerted on this because of how we're kind of squeezing out that filament. 
and there is a risk of this kind of thing breaking off you know, mid-print. So we do what we can to assure that, and one way is by using this brim setting uh, for down here at the bottom instead of the skirt. You still kind of get the test of adhesion because it prints the brim first, just like printing a skirt first corks, and kind of shows you that you, you're probably not gonna have issues with adhesion. If the skirt doesn't peel up or move, you know your bed's pretty level and you know, you've got a good chance of print going. If the skirt moves when you when it's printed, if, it, if the corners come in or something, just hit cancel. Uh, you're not gonna have a good print usually if the skirt doesn't stay down. But I am on a, a divergent ADHD uh, side story here about skirts, not printing vertically. So yeah, reasons to print this guy vertically, uh, it's pretty fast. Uh, it optimizes what is going on here in the center in terms of getting that clean without the need for any kind of support. And it optimizes the finish on this face here because the printer is able to move very smoothly in this XY plane with a great deal of precision, as opposed to if I were printing it flat and you would get this kind of tree ring stepping effect. Uh, yep, there we go. We'll just call that done. Uh, <laughs> If this disjointed, uh, crazy approach to teaching uh, the basics of 3D printing appeals to you, uh, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, if uh, not, uh, please you know press the uh, dislike button twice real hard to make sure that you get your point across. Um, thank you folks for your time. Have a great uh, New Year's Day and uh, we'll be back later with more 3D printing tips.